Why are we not born with webbed feet? And, join, uh, and Graham joins us now on News Talk. Afternoon, Graham. Afternoon. Uh, I, well, I suppose the, the question is not just why are we not born with webbed feet? Why are some people born with webbed feet uh, and indeed hands? Well, that's it. The questioner does go on to say that his his cousin, I think, has has webbed hands. And so it is possible. And indeed it is. In fact, one out of every what well, I've seen different figures, but 2000 to 3000 people are born with some kind of webbed toes or hands. Um, and um, the other part about the question, which I think is implied, is that the questioner would really kind of like to have webbed feet. So, <laughs> yes. um, but you know, there, there's there's some debate over whether having webbed feet would help helps you swim better or not. Um, and uh, you know, maybe if you use, I'm just sort of getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but if you swam the way webbed footed ducks or frogs or whatever swim, um, it could actually help you. But And in fact, you can buy webbed hand gloves and of course you can buy fins for, for swimming um, off any any reputable uh, hand glove, uh, sort of web glove store um, to help you swim. Now, you know, again, how much effect they have uh, is debatable. But so the actual question isn't why do, how do we get webbed feet, but is why do our babies born who still have webbed feet? Because when we're in the womb, we all have webbed feet till about the sixth or seventh week of, of gestation in which when our, our digits start to form. And they form by this, you know, the, the planned and programmed death of the cells between the, the fingers and toes. So... Uh, what happens is, you know, you have, you have, we all have all of our hands webbed like a whale's flipper. Um, but then the cells are, are programmed to die off, but they don't always do so. And some people, um, they don't, and, and they might have, usually it's the second and third finger or the second and, and third toe um, joined up to various degrees. I mean, it can be just skin or, or, or flesh, or it can start to be fused with bones and so forth. And the more bone gets in there, you know, the more complicated your webbing uh, of your of your toes are. Uh, and so in most people who have webbed toes, and there's some famous people with webbed toes, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's purely um, just a happenstance. It tends to run in families, so they think it's genetic, but, uh, you know, it's not really related to any particular conditions. But there are a number of conditions which do lead or have a tendency to lead to webbing of the toes and, and hands, and that includes Down syndrome and the, the less common Apert's syndrome, and then about 50 other ones as well. But uh, they have a tendency to lead to people having, having webbed toes. Uh, and again, while there's been amazing advances in the genetics surrounding this, we still don't entirely know why um, individual people get webbed toes. Right. OK. I kind of almost had this this uh, blithe assumption that when we were in the womb, we all did have webbed hands and feet and then it kind of went away. It, they do. You're right. Um, you know, in the womb, we all have webbed hands and feet, and they do go away. Like I said, unlike necrosis, which is bad, that's like the death of cells through injury. Mm -hmm. um, it's apoptosis, which is, uh, you know, again, your, your, your genes sort of determine that, you know, all this flesh here between our fingers, it's got to go. So it just dies off. That's that's the plan, right? And it goes on about again sixth to seventh to eighth week of of, of gestation of, of of the pregnancy, and uh, you know this is they've done a lot of research into um, how this works, and especially on a genetic level. And there's an incredible amount of um, sort of exciting developments in terms of trying to figure out which genes and how webbing occurs. And so in mice, there's a, a mutation which has been around for about 50 years in experimental mice called the hammer toe mutation, which gives um, mice sort of quite strongly webbed toes. Because if you look around, you'll see that most mammals, and in fact many, many animals, have digits, right? Um, and if you look at mice, you know, they have toes. If you look at elephants, they have little tiny toes. Mm. Right? Uh, if you look inside a whale's flipper, you'll see a hand. It's just totally covered in flipper, right? Because that's obviously a little more useful to the whale. Um, and so um, they have started to pinpoint in mice, at least, not just how webbing occurs, right, in this hammer toe mutation, but, 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 but not just where, but how. And it seems to involve um, the protein which regulates how the genes are expressed. And so if the, if the questioner or the listener wants webbed feet, um, there may not be something we can do for them, but for their children, right, and, and possibly if our germline intervention gets a little better, maybe our genetic modifications get better for, for them as well, right, 
but you could go into this genetic area and sort of program the genes to, to web. Uh, and um, interestingly, this is another, it's related to another mutation, which I think a lot more people want, which is wings, right? A lot of people, a lot of my colleagues, actually, strangely enough, would like pterodactyl wings. Now, I don't exactly know why they want pterodactyl wings, except for the obvious, I suppose, you know, as opposed to any other kind of wings. Because it's cool, yeah. Because it would be yeah. cool, and yeah. then we could fly around, and we wouldn't have to, you know, get on the public transport or anything like that, right? It'd be sustainable. Anyway, you know, as, if you look at, but bat wings are regulated, and the webbing between them are regulated in the, by the same genetic grouping and the same uh, sort of protein which regulates it, which is called sonic hedgehog. Um, uh, yes, you heard that correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, those wacky geneticists like to name things uh, after video games. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, the same the webbing of a bat's wing um, is regulated by the same sort of genetic group. Um, because, of course, if you take a look at a bat's wing, or a pterodactyl's wing, for that matter, you'll see that it's actually just some really long fingers, uh, which which um, have web, really a lot of webbing in between them, right? Mm. So, so there you go. That That's in the cards. And the other thing is we're getting much, much better at finding where potentially beneficial mutations and possibly much more useful ones than having wings uh, or, or web feet um, can be found. Now, uh, so, so scientists, because they're studying the genome and they've got better computers now, are, are sequencing the, the genomes and, the, and the, the genes of different groups uh, from all around the world because mutation and evolution are still going on despite the fact that we can now artificially keep ourselves alive. Uh, and so they're going to look at people who've survived various diseases, not that this is relevant to our current situation, um, who have developed mutations for all kinds of useful things, specifically resistance to things like malaria or Lassa's disease. Um, but in, you know, there are some other mutations which are produced by our perhaps unhealthy environment, like this small town in Italy where people have mutated in a way such that they're, they're just really good at get rid of, getting, getting rid of cholesterol. And they have sort of 88% less chance of getting heart disease than, than regular people. Mm. Uh, so so they, they, they think that, in fact, just generally uh, in big populations like the United States, people are actually getting better at, um, you know, are, people are mutating and, and selecting genes which are better at coping with these high-fat diets, um, partly because people are dying off younger who, who uh, don't have these mutations, right? So, so there, but it's a very complicated story. Only a bit of it's natural selection because of the presence of medicine. But there's an awful lot going on in terms of the speed of mutation in other parts of the genome and in terms of the interaction of, say, much older sperm, sperm from much older fathers. Like the sperm's the same age, but the you know, much older father's sperm, uh, which also tends to have more mutations. So there's a lot of mutating going on out there. Some of them are beneficial. A lot of them are not. Mm. Uh, but, you know, we could be seeing more and more of this kind of thing. Um, the reason why um, we tend to have digits uh, is, is, a, is a tricky one, but it does seem like toes, which could otherwise just seem a bit annoying, um, or it's not clear what their use is, are absolutely crucial for us propelling ourselves forward and running at speed, which is why they were selected for in evolution. If you're a gibbon and you have really long toes which, and a sort of prehensile big toe, which allows you to grab the uh, limbs of trees, it's very useful because you're a gibbon and you live in trees. If you watch a gibbon running around in the veldt, which is where a lot of our evolution took place, um, they're really slow. They, they, they sort of shuffle around sideways and uh, you know, are easily caught. Uh, so whereas if you have just our size toes, it's really good for running long distances. And in fact, sprinters have really long toes, but that gives them a lot more power, but it means that they can't run long distances. Right. But do we need individual toes or maybe just like one big toe and do, just do the trick just as well? The science is still not totally clear about this. And even if you talk to sort of podiatrists who, who, who worry about these things, it's not entirely clear. We could have the sort of hammer toe, right? So this, uh, and, and, or we could have one big toe, and we'd still possibly get the same amount of power. But it does seem like the distributed digits do have a certain role in terms of um, balancing us and, and being that much more flexible. Uh, because they can they can move around not that much but but they can move around maybe a little bit more if we just had a flipper, right? Um, that said, you know for the most part, uh, if you are born with webbed toes um, like Ashton Kutcher or Stalin, uh -huh. uh, 
you could uh, you don't experience any loss of movement right or or function uh, from your toes um and so a lot of a lot of doctors will not actually correct the toes by by slicing through that flesh um you know some do some don't it it's something a lot of people only notice when they bring their baby home and they're like well, wait here you know hmm. um um, often, if they do do the correction, it'll be you know when the babies are very very young. But uh, but I think increasingly doctors are are just not correcting um, some webbed toes, right? Unless they're they're leading to some kind of physical problem. Yeah, but there's no great advantage to it. They're not they don't turn out to be better swimmers. No, sadly, no. I mean, yeah. um, you'd have to change your whole swimming style to that of a duck's uh, to really get any advantage out of it. Yeah, but evolution is an ongoing process then of which we're subject as, as much as anything else. So who knows what we'll be like in a thousand years' time. Yeah, there's people saying, look, if we, you know, it turns into water world, and I believe this is connected to their, the que- listener's other question, which was about living on water, which we already covered, and, mm. and that was interesting in itself, you know. There are people who speculate that we would develop all sorts of different um, mutations, including webbed toes, to, to, to live in, in the water more. And as will perhaps not surprise you, the people who are big promoters of the aquatic ape theory, which doesn't have a lot of evidence for it, but it's very popular out there in niche parts of the scientific community, um, which is the idea that we are the water apes. You know, we like, are apes who spend most of our time in water. Um, that we um, evolved to have less hair because it, you know, would hold us down or, or you know, wouldn't be very streamlined for swimming around in the water. These people are all over the webbed toes um, to suggest that, you know, and the webbed toes in the womb to suggest that it's actually more natural for us to have webbed toes. And we've lost our webbed toes and we're just sort of living through the trauma of being on land still. I don't, I don't know. I'm exaggerating <laughs> a little bit. But, uh, you know, this is a real hypothesis, yeah. but there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of, it, of, of evidence for it. Right. We're really great sad question, ducks. though, is yeah. <laughs> why didn't we choose to fly, right? Because if you can swim, right, or um, fly, you have a lot more freedom than running around in the veld, mm. right? You know, it's a you know, fluid medium, and you just have a lot of options. Um, and that's why we all secretly want pterodactyl wings. Um, but the to fly, we would have had to sacrifice a lot of things like our bone density, right, probably the weight of our teeth and all sorts of other things. And it just didn't seem to work out for us as part of our evolutionary story. Graham, thanks a minute for talking to us uh, today.